Hello, and welcome to Schmidty's Guide on how to tank Hell Fallen. And this guide will be going through the build and uh, all of the fights. This is one of the more difficult dungeons in the game because you require DPS and a healer who all know what they are doing. This is going to be our first dungeon where we are using Hammer. Really, I'm just using it because of this skill right here, Trucker, because of the increased block chance it gives you. Uh, we got Escalation, Helter Skelter, Karma, Aftershock, Chaotic Pull, Shockwave, and Whippersnapper. And a lot of this is, uh, this is a Master Planner build, by the way. A lot of this is targeted towards having a bunch of impairs for the third and fifth, or sorry, third and sixth fights. So, we are running Shoot'em Up because we are running Escalation. We have Intensity, uh, Double Dash to make Trucker and uh, Health Skelter have smaller cooldowns. Inevitability because it's just better here than 12 Gouge because it has a chance to instantly affect the battle, whereas uh, Debilitate takes a while. Uh, we've got Hard Case for extra protection, Cool Calm and Collected, and Jones in the Fast Lane. And that is what we are going to be using for this entire dungeon. So first thing that you need to know here is that this sandstorm is vicious. You want to slot hit points here if you are not the tank. Since I am the tank, we're just running with what I already have, which is fine. And the guys have already run through and sort of taken out the trash mobs that are in this area. They are all behind cover. Each of these pillars counts as cover. You can see that we can hide behind them and lessen our stacks here. Because the sandstorm hurts a lot. As you can see here, we're just going to stick around right here. Wait for a second. Get over behind here where there would normally be another couple of junk mobs. But since our handy dandy teammates have already dealt with them, which gives me great pleasure, and they haven't attacked these guys because they're waiting for me. I have I have high hopes for everybody here. I'm just sort of hoping that Amai Chan is a good healer because that's the one thing I don't know. Either that or she's doing a video too, which is why she's lagging behind. Alright, well, if everybody's here, we do not need a healer for this, so we're starting. Okay, so our first boss here is Archeo Machinist. Uh, really, if he has something that's casting, you want to impair it. Uh, he'll have Ancient Artifacts, which is just going to bring down a uh, turret with a shield on it that just starts blasting people at random. And you need to impair that. He also has Life Strip, which is a Chain Lightning. Does a ton of damage. It could one-shot me from here. Uh, you can either line a sight it behind one of these pillars somewhere, or you can just impair it. Really, it's probably better to just impair it. It's just easier that way. So we are waiting for everyone to get here. And it does take a little while. Like, this dungeon is just obnoxious in every way possible. Even getting to the first fight is this uh, sandstorm weight game. It's not hard, it's just... Raining it requires a lot of patience. It's really tedious. All right, looks like my chin is almost here. We got that is a lot of stacks, and they they don't go down quickly out of combat. They do only have a three second timer, which is really nice. But much like life burn, they uh, they don't go away. Yeah, as my chin is finding out. So uh, this uh, gives me pause here. Because <laughs> you can definitely get through with that amount of health, especially as a healer.
but uh, you gotta wait for these stacks to go down because each time that it goes up, that wind does more damage. And here, here's where you would just, just, just wait. Here's where you just wait. Uh, okay, we did it. Okay, well, you know, being able to survive that amount of uh, hellish exposure is actually impressive, so maybe, maybe we have a shot here. Alright, so now that everybody's here, make sure everybody's ready, and we're hopping down. So I like to engage most fights with Trucker. We're going to stop that. We are actually just going to stop that. Like you can, you can line of sight that instead behind a pillar, but you don't have to. And that that was cutting it a little closer than I should have. Like okay, you'll see that he now has three stacks of rising vigor. It is actually CC immune at the moment. All right, but as. You <laughs> Dabs! Uh, the dabs was done at the correct time. A lot of people will do it while the shield is still up and you don't want to do that. But it's almost not worth using it here because you want it for the next fight right away. And that guy has no HP after the uh, after the shield that reduces damage that you do by 90% goes away. By the way, all the bosses in this dungeon have a shield that reduces damage by 90%. So he has 500,000 hit points, even though it only shows 50, which is actually reasonable to just burn, which is what you'll usually do. So we're actually going to wait for buffs here, because I want them. So this guy has one cast that you really have to pay attention to, which is uh, Catastrophic Feedback. It's another Chain Lightning that can just kill you, and it's definitely going to kill anybody else in the party. So you want to impair that and also try to make sure that you sort of group all these guys up so that they chase you because they do have a tendency to chase the healer. This fight is a little wonky. Like, I have definitely had times where I run in and they just run past me. Like, mind you, no one else has run in yet. They just run past me after I hit them once and go kill somebody. It's, it's really obnoxious. Sometimes I will actually switch out Shockwave for... Uh, stoicism if that happens too much and you can use Helter Skelter as a group impair at the beginning to get them all on you and stop catastrophic feedback instead of what I'm gonna use which is shockwave alright looks like it's time so we're going to start here now we're gonna run them around a little bit just really pay attention to our health here yeah, trying to impair them when we want to give our healer a little bit more time to stay alive. And trucker. Trucker when we can. Okay, we don't need to. Hey, I don't like to uh, start that fight with trucker because the little bit of lag that you'll get from the game trying to keep track of where your character's positioning is will make it so that some of those guys will run past you more often. So while it may not be a good idea to start with Trucker, I've just instead decided that the best option is to run in, uh, use Escalation until you see him use Catastrophic Feedback, and then use Damage Mitigation, or use Shockwave as your Damage Mitigation, because if everything is impaired, nothing is trying to kill you. Okay. Sort of deal with these guys here. Nothing particularly special. Oh yeah, um, a gear very similar to the other stuff. Ooh. Very similar to the other stuff. Uh, just all the damage pieces are now 0 .5, 0 .5 to try to help keep aggro because the shields in this fight make it harder than you would want to hold aggro. Because you're doing way less damage and your aggro is based on your damage. Alright, so here, here there is an order. So there are going to be two dogs. So first a dog pops down after these two genies. You want to kill Cinnabar first, then Tantalite, then that uh, dog that's coming over here will hop down. You beat him up a little bit, but you don't kill him. 
you walk over here and a second dog appears. You want that second dog to die first. So, the order is... Cinnabar, Tantalite, Dog 2, and then Dog 1. Alright. Going, everybody's here. So we're going to start by using Trucker to get in, and then we're going to immediately target Tantalite and use Chaotic Pull just to bring him over. I'm going to use Trucker one more time because right as that dog hops down, things get a little dicey damage-wise. Okay, now we're going to stop Cinnabar from using Firmament Barrage, and then we switch to Tantalite. This is why the kill order is so important, because they are your DPS are essentially your second impair. Like, if they don't kill him fast enough, then one of those things will go off. Okay, try to use Trucker off cooldown to help your guy out. Uh, help out your healer. And you don't want Prime to be more than maybe... Uh, we want him to be right at about 45,000 health. Right around here. Yeah, this is perfect. This is exactly what we want. Okay, so he aggro resets right here, so get ready right after that yell right there. So get ready to use big stuff so that he pays attention to you. Okay, we like to Helter Skelter through him. We're gonna drag him over here. And he uses Vile Tendril, we need to stop that. He's using Firmament Barrage, we need to stop that. Now we're looking for Firmament Barrage on Alpha, we need to stop that. This fight is crazy. Don't forget to use Tracker. And now we're just gonna target Prime. Because he should be the next guy to use a uh, skill that we have to impair. By the way, Firmament Barrage and Vile Tendril are all party wipes. There he is. And they killed Dog 2 first and Dog 1 second, like good people. Thank you guys. And the buffs were on time, which is right after that yellow shield goes down. Perfect. All right, so this fight, this fight has less consequences for dying than you would expect because the well doesn't lock, so if you die here, you can just run back in. All right, so we're going to wait for a second, and once these guys disappear, this fight is a little wonky bug-wise, so you have to be wary of that. So you'll get three sets of these guys running from this entrance. Just sort of try to beat them up right next to where they spawn from here. Uh, you, they will be gaining heal aggro on your healer. You'll notice they're running right past me. Uh, if you have good DPS, they're just going to kill them after you impair them before they can do anything. But your healer will be getting aggro, and your little tiny escalation hit once or twice isn't usually going to be enough. So wait for them to all get through, and... Helter Skelter. That also gives you a little bit of extra time to get some... Uh, aggro in. And now that we've done those three sets, we are going to just play dodge. So really what you want to do is stand right next to somebody else because these barrages will target where your characters are. So the less you move away from them and the more people you have stacking on top of each other, right, the more of these barrages you can have right next to each other. So it's really easy to just keep this entire area clean by doing this. Everybody's got their own little strategy to keep this place clean. All right, here we go. These guys, all three of these ash kind, have Searing Brand and will kill you instantly. Alright, cool. Fortunately, between Impairs and good DPS, we are not having any troubles here. Since my Helter Skelter didn't catch that one Ash kind, I was actually a little worried because uh, Whippersnapper can be a little ficky, finicky in deciding which mob is the closest to you. It is not necessarily the one that you are pointing at and kissing. Alright, and finally we are going to get to the real boss. Like, all the fights in this are just, like, wait a really long time. That's really what it is, right? Just deal with a bunch of mobs, wait a long time. 
deal with a shield that lasts 30 seconds for no reason. Wait a long time. Alright, here she is. So we are going to start hitting her. Because everybody's going to start swinging at her before you really have a chance to hit her. Nope, you stay there. And we wait for the shield to go away. And I'm dragging her this way because when she uses reanimate, those guys behind us are going to spawn. And we want to be as far away from them as possible. Yeah, you can see it started there. But we want to be as far away from them as possible. And since she's ranged and runs away from me, that just sort of happens to work. And we just used dabs. Uh, I mean, it's the right time to use dabs. It's just like she has 50,000 hit points. Just, just kill her the old fashioned way. Because we actually want dabs here. Alright, so I'm going to be kiting here. You do not have to. You can pick all three of these guys up at the same time. I'm just showing you a way that's easy with pugs, which is pick up the first guy. And right about now should be good. So if everyone is paying attention, they will realize that they, deal they need to not attack here. So we're going to take the Iron Catastrophe, bring him over here, and we're going to play Ring Around the Rosie for 30 seconds. The other two guys, as you can see, are just going to sort of walk over to that uh, wall over there, start banging on it. I guess it's a gate. Uh, well, we play Hide and Seek with Mr. Iron Catastrophe. All right. So, lava eruption will happen. You need to get out of the way of that. You need to be 20.7 meters away, which we are. All right, now we want to dash back in. Hopefully, they will just buff immediately because we want all the big stuff immediately, just everything. We don't want him to get more than one of them on us. Yeah, because if they are slow there, if your DPS do not just destroy this guy, um, he is not after me. There we go. Uh, then both of them will come after you. If that happens, then getting out of uh, the lava pool is even more important, because if one of these lava golems is inside of a different lava golem's pool, he'll start gaining health like a lot of health back. Pretty much go back to full health immediately. So get to your uh, 20.7 meters. It'll look like you're gonna die, but you're not. If you want to, you can always uh, dance Gundam style right there to let everyone know that you're the best. And again, we're just gonna blast him here. I'm just gonna dash through him because my deeps are just going to kill him by the time it matters. And we'll be over here attacking the melt. You don't want to get too far ahead, because even though this guy has a little bit of, like, startup time with his roar, you do want your healer to be in the range to heal you here. So, basically, again, we are just waiting for him to use the lava pool, and then we will run away. Alright, there's Lava Eruption. You can use your dash to get away if you're not sure. And here we are. We are safe. Totally safe, guys. Don't even worry about it. Completely safe. Yeah. And that's it. Cool. We have done five of the fights already. That's really good. This is way faster than you are ever going to do a pug, I promise. We just have to hope that uh, our last fight here is really smooth. Uh, I expect to die several times on the third and sixth fights, especially in a pug. It's just what happens. And then, and then they decide that that these junk mobs need a 30-second 
shield that gives a 90% damage reduction. Because, you know, why not make people last, wait another extra two minutes while trying to get to the last boss for no reason? Alright, these ads are also really mean. They will spawn behind, which means you want to grab the ones that are behind so that they don't run around killing the people in your party. Stay away from those electric smoke grenades, they hurt. And we're just gonna start walking them towards the well here. Cool. Alright, so there's two more sets. Grab your well, and then about halfway up this flight of stairs, you'll get a set right about here. Yep. And you'll notice that sometimes if these guys don't have a shield, like that one, that one didn't have a shield for no reason. I don't know why it happens, but we always take those. And... Just waiting for these guys to lose their shield, because the second they do, they are toast. Poof. Gone. Alright, and one more. Just sort of stun them both so that our healer doesn't get blasted so hard. There we go. And... Yeah. <laughs> You can sort of get cut off from your group here in this tiny area with those smoke grenades. It's not a big deal. Yep, but our deeps are good enough that we actually just burned through that guy even with his 90% damage reduction. <laughs> Alright, just like in fight 3, which had tons of impairs, this fight also has an order for the same reason. Your DPS are acting as a second impair for you so that you get a break, so, right, so that you don't have to deal with even more mechanics than you should have to. Alright, so you let everybody know by being a little bit silly. And... We are going to get started here. Um... So what I like to do here is... Oh, I don't even have... <laughs> so there's a way to mark things in this game, but I don't have one on this character. So hopefully they'll just pay attention. Alright, so we are going to back up here, target the center one. And if everybody was paying attention, they will be blasting this middle one, which will make it so that he dies quicker. Basically, the second that, that, sh that one of these guys gets to 1 HP... Uh, we will skip this section. So if our DPS are all targeting the same thing and are all good, I don't think they're all targeting the same thing, though, we will get done with this. So that's just a way to make it a little bit quicker here. Alright, so now that wonderful sandstorm from the beginning is back. So we go off to the side here, and you're going to want to be in an area that you can s where you can be seen by everything, because what's going to happen is these more of those Oni ads are going to spawn here and they're going to throw some of those smoke grenades. You want them to throw them over here and you don't want them to path in weird ways to get to you. So wait until three of them are in... Yep, there we go. So three of them have that CC immune veil. And once that happens, you can run over here and attack them. If they kill Wicker, you lose. So be very wary about making sure you have picked all of them up. Uh, we are going to roll back or dodge roll back just to get our uh, buff from Trucker because Trucker is absolutely nuts. It's like 60% uptime on this crazy block. Look at this. Ridiculous. Alright, now what's going to go on here is uh, Ascendant always spawns first and he's the one that you need. So we're going to spam Trucker so that we hit him. Then we're going to go over here to the left because this is the next guy who spawns. Then we're going to go over to the right because he's the next guy who spawns. If you mess that up, one of your one of your guys is gonna die. 
It's really disappointing. So now we are just looking for Ascendant to cast Phase. There it is. Make him stop. Then we switch to Gog. Try to use uh, Trucker. Make our healer's life easier. And we're going to do the same thing. We're waiting for Gog to use Phase, and we're stopping him. At this point in time, we wait to see which side they send a whole bunch of electric smoke grenades onto. That side. We're running to the other side. This is where we want buffs. So if somebody has dabs, now is the great time for that. Oh, they've already killed the Senate. Excellent. So now we're targeting Gog. If they kill him fast, he doesn't get to use 5th Column. He didn't. Excellent. Which is a thing that just spawns more adds, and those adds will go straight to your healer, I promise. There it is. There it goes! Alright, and we're just stopping phase, and it just keeps on going Ascendant Gog Magog, Ascendant Gog Magog, and if one of them dies, you just take them out of the order and keep going. Just stop phase. That was incredibly smooth. Like, that was a great, great run. I, I wouldn't have even been able to expect such a great run. I was absolutely expecting to have several wipes just like I was okay with on some of the other videos just to show what happens and how to deal with it but we just had a great group thanks to everybody who ran with us and maybe we can catch these guys for fac and do it again uh, by the way facility is the very last dungeon that we have to run now so uh, get ready to have a whole bunch of different builds and I will see you there